Hey, what's up, man? Mighty Mouse UFL on the YouTube. Subscribe, Underground Fight League, man. Um, we out here doing another prison talk <clears throat> with a guy from Atlanta. I'll let him introduce himself. He can tell you a little bit about himself, man, uh, where he's at, um, and, you know, how much time he's done did, what systems he's been in, what level he's been on, uh, what he's out here doing now. We'll, we'll, ask, we'll go back and forth and ask questions and stuff. Um, but go ahead and introduce yourself, man. Yo, what's up? Hey, it's Hillbilly Hot Boy, man. I, uh, yeah, Hillbilly Hot Boy from Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I'm out here, man. I did graze. Um, you know, that's really the only work I've ever known. You know what I'm saying? So, right. uh, car going up the road. But, uh, man, yeah. I'm going to go over here, man. Might be a little bit more quiet. Hold on. All right. I'm going to slide over here. I'm slide over here. Kids over here fucking playing in the pool and shit. I hear you a little bit better over here. All right, go ahead. What we saying now? All right. Oh, uh, like, I've done. I done a little bit over a little bit over five years. Um, I mean, but I've been in and out of jail all my life. Um, you know, I ain't gonna get into what led me to jail, but is I done some stupid stuff that I shouldn't have done. Yeah, no, no, no. I shouldn't have did it. Yeah. You know what? So is I mean I'm trying to, you know, trying to maintain, do the grave digging thing. Stay straight, cause you know I got I got my moms out here. You know what I'm saying. So I, uh, me and my wife, we just we don't split up. Uh, so, but all right, Miles. Uh, so what you say? So you say you're doing a uh, grave digging stuff. So what do you like? Like actually dig graves? Yeah, yeah. I set funerals up. Dig, uh, dig the graves. Sometimes, sometimes I dig the graves. Most of the time, hey, Lisa, I'm saying. Can you tell them to quit screaming, man? Please, can you tell them to quit screaming, please. Most of the time, I'm setting up the funerals. Uh, yeah. Doing vault work, like that's what I do. Um, right. I've been setting burial vaults for off and on for twenty years. So, um, you know, I I made mistakes in my life, and I'd like to get out here, you know, and let people know, man, that. I just count 30 years paper, man. So yeah. I got a license on paper, bro. Well, um, uh, what part you said you live in, you live in Georgia. What part of Georgia do you live in? Yeah. I'm really in Rockmar, bro. Okay. How, how close yeah. to like, I know like, like Atlanta, Savannah, stuff like that. How 40, close? Uh, I'm 40 minutes to Atlanta. Okay. Good. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Cause I, I used to live in Marietta. We just talked about that. So I live probably, probably about, uh, Maybe like 20 minutes from Atlanta, 30 minutes from Atlanta. I ain't live far from Atlanta either. So I know exactly kind of where you're at over there. Yeah. So but, you said you did uh you did five years total, huh? Yeah, I done five years total. Um, believe it or not. I had I had somebody lie on me and yeah. try to get me for a whole lot more time, bro. And yeah. when they did that, I had a witness come forward. And when the witness come forward, they ought to get me for what was felony obstruction at the time. Yeah. So I got uh I got a five do one. I went done the one, got out, turned around, done four more. So I was like, man, you know what? It's getting old. So yeah. And I've been in and out of jail all my life. Um man, I've done long stints in the county jails and stuff, man. Just sitting there from where you know, DUIs, stuff like that. Um, yeah. I never really caught no nothing serious until this last time that I caught. Uh, like I said, I bit off 30 years of paper, bro. Um, they hit me for two Aggies, um, possession of the firearm, um, and possession. Well, the possession charges, they – Dropped the intent warrants on me because the sheriff's department pulled up too soon. So that messed their investigation up. So that's why I only got 15 years for it. I got 15 years paper. This was my first ever charge. And then the Aggies, I proved them self-defense, but I still pled guilty. Right. Man, when I pled guilty, because I knew I was guilty of, you know, at least 
taking the knife away from people by force, you know what I'm saying? Because they come at me with a knife twice. Yeah. So, and when they come at me with the knife, bro, so I took the knife away from them. And the second time they come at me with a knife, bro, I was protecting myself and my mom. And when they come at me the second time, I pulled a gun. And because I didn't call the law, they did. I went to jail. So, but I've done a lot of time in jails. Ain't really done. I mean, five years, that's enough for me. I bit me off five years. Oh, yeah, no. right no more. Well, that's, that's plenty, man. People brag about doing, you know, you know, double digits and stuff like that, man. That's uh, ain't nothing to be proud of, man. You know what I'm saying? Or it, 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 it seems like it seems like the code, the code in prison is like the more time you've done or the more time you've got under your belt or whatever. Like that's that gives you more of like a badge of honor, man. But at the end of the day, you know, as we know now and where we sit now, it ain't about a fucking waste of life. Yep. So, you know, five years is fucking plenty uh, years that you're never gonna get back. So, you know. Yep. And there, like I said, it's just a badge of honor. At least you take him home, please. And here it's a badge of honor. Like when we're in there, um fucking um, you know, but out here it's like, man, it, you know, you don't waste you know, half your fucking life in there. And it's like, man, that now you're looking back and you're old and you're like, damn, that's me, that's sixteen years of my life that I can't never get back. That's sixteen years of my life that I can't never, you know, get back with my kids or, you know, that, I, that I've wasted away, you know, watch my mom get old, you know what I'm saying? Watch my dad die, stuff like that. Those are all, those are all years that I'll never be able to get back. And there, yeah. you know, you know, you brag about, oh man, I got 16 years, man, shit, I got 20 years. And then, you know, but man, it, ain't nothing cool about that shit. So trust uh -huh. me, five years, five years, plenty, plenty amount of time, man. So don't ever say that might not be that much, man. But that, that's a lot of fucking time, man, when you're away from your fucking family and you, and you watch that's five years right. go by. You know? And then all the hey, and then all the jail stints too. Not just prison time. The jail yeah. stints, man, that takes away from your life too, man. I'm Stay 37 mighty, man. now. I'm yeah. 37 now, bro. And I'm like, oh man, I done wasted all my life, man. Yeah. Cause now yeah, it's like now that I got older and I start thinking about stuff more, it's like, man, why did I do that? Why? Yeah. Because like you say, my mom's done got old. My dad's old, and, you know, people, when we're young, man, we don't think about our loved ones, man, because we really do put them through it, too, bro. So, yeah. I mean, is people honestly don't think about that when we're young. And yeah, no I done, like I said, I done a lot of stupid stuff. And this last time that I that I went to jail, man, I knew I hung my head. I was like, man, cause my daughter was sitting to be born and everything, bro. And I was like, man, and the next thing I know, I got busted. And when I got busted, I said no more. Yeah, no and doubt. That so was what's, what's your what's your biggest downfall on the streets? Like uh like substance abuses or money or what what do you what do you feel like it or was this just just a you know a spur of the moment type situation, man? You've always been a law abiding person and this just was just something that just fucking was a fluke and it just happened. Well, I mean, now don't get me wrong, I ain't always I ain't always looked at it like I do now, you know what I'm saying? I was out there in the streets, man. I was you know, I was in the dope down. I ain't gonna lie. That's that's what yeah. I was doing. I substance abuse was where I was at. And then I started trying to get money, bro. And once I started trying to get money, I started getting greedy. When I got greedy, that's that's what happened. And yeah. then when I got greedy, it was like, now that I look back, it was like, man, I'm I'm glad I'm out of that life. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's like I've been. You hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. Yeah, you froze up there for a second. Go back to what you were uh, saying now. Like, I. Stream is froze, brother. Hey. There it goes. It works. Working it's fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it froze up there for a second. Yeah, I know it, it froze up on my end too. I don't know. I'm almost uh, at, I'm almost at I'm almost at my house. I had to leave from up there, man. Fucking my son and them being too damn loud, I won't be able to hear you. 
some of the post stuff right. here on the on the porch and shit. So it might have froze up on my end. It might have actually not even have been on your end. Uh, but I'm here. I'm here. I sit down at the porch right now. But so, man. So tell me, um, what you out here? What, what you out here doing now, man? You out here? You said you out here digging graves and stuff, man. Is that, is, that, uh, is that is that a good? Is that I mean, is that good pay? Is that enough for you to support your family and support yourself? No, nah, bro. Because I've been I've been telling my mom, man. You know what I'm saying? That I ain't I ain't making enough money. You know what I'm saying? And I told my mom what I was thinking, and my mom's like, what? And I told my mom, I'm glad, you know, that's the only person I really got to talk to other than, you know, you and other people, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. I really ain't, since, since I was 16, bro, I really ain't had that many friends. I ain't had no friends. Yeah. And... And keeping the circle small, that's how I stayed out of jail a long time. But, like I say, yeah, it's on my end, Mouse. I don't know what's yeah. going on. Yeah, you're freezing up a little bit. You got good service in there? Yeah, yeah, I got Wi-Fi, so. Yeah, you should have good service if you're connected and shit. Let's yeah. keep it rocking, see what happens. So, but, um, so you've actually, so you've actually, um, you thought about going back to hustling and doing crime and yep. stuff like that again, man, because you're not able to make ends meet. And that's that. Yep. And it's like that for a lot of people, man. You know, um, I tell people everything's not always, you know, you know, gravy, man. I, like I said, man, when I came home from prison the first time, um, I was expecting I was going to go back in the tractor trailer. I was going to, you know, you know, get back out here, get my CDL back and just jump right back in the truck and stuff, man. You know, my wife was living in a trailer with the kids and like, we didn't have shit, you know? So, when they told me that I was on a six month suspension when I came home, it was like, man, six month suspension. I just did fucking eight years. I was like, yeah. that wasn't part of that eight years. That six months wasn't part of the eight years. No, that six months didn't start until I started the ASAP class. Well, um, <laughs> you know, uh, my mind was like, man, look, we're living in the middle of nowhere. I wasn't in the city no more. My mind was like, man, I'm, I'm going to have to get it back from the rough, man, for six months. Like, Man, she can't support me and these kids and everybody else. We don't have no bus fare. We don't have buses out here. We don't have shit. You know, we'll have one car that's on its last leg. She's got to use that to go to work. You know, so I can't get my CDL back. I can't even get my license back until after I get through this class. So, man, what do you, you know, they put me in a position where my, well, I felt like my back was against the wall. And I definitely had those same thoughts that you're talking about. And for yep. the people that are coming out of prison, man, if they haven't felt that way, they either got one hell of a support system where they don't need for nothing or want for nothing. Or they are um, just don't give a shit about having anything or succeeding. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So if you, if you, like I said, if you get out, man, and you don't have those type of thoughts, you know, and I don't care how much time you've done, man. A lot of people, man, they just think, well, man, they did like 10 years. They should have learned their lesson. They've done 20 years. They don't learn their lesson, you know. And I've said this before my shit. My brother did 22 years. He was out a year. And got strung out on meth and fucking had a shootout with the police and the police killed my brother. So it doesn't matter how much time you got. I got a lot of people that have done 20 and 30 years that are back in on life right now. So unless you make that decision to succeed, you're not going to, man. And yeah. and I hope, I mean, you're doing a lot better than a lot of people just because you probably got your license back. You got a job. You're out here. You're at least collecting money every week. And you got a family and you're just talking about your mom. You got a roof over your head. If you go watch my prison talk with Casper, um, he don't have none of that, but you have, you know what I'm saying? Not a job. He's fucking, he's dealing with substance abuse. He just got out of the halfway house. He just did five more years. He done did 21 years altogether. Um, he's sleeping in fucking ditches. You know what I'm saying? Like he's wearing fucking a girl's hoodie that he do. You know what I mean? He's doing, there's always, I always say this, man, that there's always people out here doing worse than you are, man. And that's a fact. Um, sometimes it's hard to say, man, fuck that. Ain't nobody out here doing worse than me. Until you see it, for, you see it for yourself, you know. And when yeah. I do these prison talks, I hear it all the time, you know. So, you know, I, I think that you, I think that you'll make it, man. I, I don't know, like, are you trying to go back to school? Are you trying to um get anything to try to be, uh, better yourself, enhance yourself, to be able to make more money? Actually, uh, Mouse, I was really thinking about uh, like getting my CDLs, man, because yeah. you can get yeah. you can get a lot of money out driving a truck, and yeah. with you know. I mean, like I say, I you know I straightened my butt up, so is it took yeah. me a long time to do it. But I, I, I think me and you talked about going to get your CDL. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Um, 
I hope so, guys get their CDLs, man. So, like, you know, it, it, anytime that you're ready to jump on that, man, let me know. We'll fucking make that shit happen. Hey, right, I'm ready. Because I can't go. Like, you know what I'm saying? Hey, I told right. you when when I told you I was thinking yeah. about that, bro. I can't go yeah. back. Then. And I know, I'm, I know I'm going for life this time, bro. So. Well, you let me know, man. Whenever you're ready, man. If you're ready now, I'll get you into that class. You could be in there about fucking Monday, man. You know what I'm saying? They'll give you the bus ticket. They'll send you out there. They'll put you in a hotel, or they'll put you in. They got like a, a like a four man hotel type thing that they got that's on their um their headquarters out in Salt Lake City, or they can put you in a hotel depending on how crowded they are there. Nice, uh, nice fucking place, man. They'll put you in there. They'll guarantee your CDL. You ain't gotta pay a dollar. They'll get. They'll guarantee your CDL. Um, they'll put you out there with a trainer after you get your CDL. They're not gonna leave you high and dry. You okay. sign a little year contract with them. You'll make seventy thousand dollars that year. And they'll give you a fucking truck after you leave with that trainer, man. So it's a win-win. It's got two beds in the back. You can put your own TV in there, your refrigerator, your microwave. You know, you can make anywhere between – usually as a student driver, man, you can make – nowadays you can make anywhere between 50 some thousand to $70,000 a year depending on the company, you know, for your first year of over the road. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it, oh. to me, man, to me, I think for felons – now, I got a lot of other people that help dudes get their electrician shits, their HVAC stuff. Um, I even got a guy that does uh, helps guys get into the tattoo shop that he owns. You know, so I got guys that help dudes. I got I got some roofers out here that fucking you know give dudes labor jobs. But to me, man, I think the best the best job, man, that as long as you can get a license, you ain't got no DUIs and shit like that, man, and uh, that are that are within like a ten year period and stuff, man. I think CDLs, man, and you get health insurance. You know, I haven't had health insurance my whole life. You know what I mean? The first time I ever had health insurance was when I was in a fucking truck, bro. You know, so. I think it's a win-win situation. You could be on gang file. You can tat it up. You could be down and out, and you can jump in that fucking truck and start getting paid immediately, man. Yeah, you know. Cool. Well, see, that's that's one reason why I, I say so is because you know me being a convicted felon, and people, hey, people don't know it. But people look down on you because of that. Yeah. You no, know, because of jobs and stuff, man. Yeah. That's why I can't get a lot of jobs. I can't t- like I can't go to the Exxon and go to work. Because I got a felony. Yeah. Uh, because you can't work a cash register at the Exxon. Yeah. So it's yeah. like. They think you're going to steal their shit. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So it's like, yep. man. Hey, for anybody watching out there, hey, man, this life ain't where it's at, man. No. Nah. Once you I, label that shit, man, it's hard. You're labeled a felon. You're on gang file. You got fucking face tattoos, man. You better have some type of skill because, man, they're going to take that 15 or 16 year old, like you said, at an Exxon. That's yep. not a risk to them. That 15 or 16 year old got the same skill level you got if you need to work a cash register. Yeah. And they don't have to worry about them stealing their shit, robbing them, taking out, fucking throwing beer out yeah. back for their friends to come pick up. They don't have to worry about that with their 15, 16 year old. Even though they yeah. might, and you might be the most wholesome motherfucker in the world. Look, I'm coming home from prison. I'm trying to do right. In their mind, they only see one thing, and that's what's on that paper, man. And yeah. I go through that even nowadays. They don't care. People don't realize, uh, one, people that have done what they've done that have changed or two people that are wrongly convicted that have done time in prison um, mm-hmm. and that are out free now, but they still have that title on them as a felon um, that they have to live with for the rest of their lives, man. So I always tell dudes in the reentry programs, man, before the COVID, I used to do all the reentry shit. I tell dudes, man, listen, if you are coming out of this place and you are offered, so, and we'll talk about that about the Atlanta system, because I don't know nothing about the Atlanta system, but I, I want to know about it. If you are offered schooling inside the penitentiary, um, whether it's getting your GED, college education, getting wall paneling, heating and air conditioning, electrician, floor covering, industrial maintenance, uh, fucking barbering license, fucking yep. your, your OSHA, your HVAC shit for the fucking kitchen, dining hall, whatever, man, cooking license. If you are offered any of that stuff, and I know in our system we were offered all that shit. If you are offered that in your system, and if your system doesn't offer that, your system is slacking like fuck because if you put guys back out on these streets without no type of education or any type of state certifications, what the fuck do you think they're going to go back out here doing? What they know how to do. Sell, yep. steal, rob. Well, that's what they do. You know? Hey, that's the so, right. Too. Yeah. Let me ask you about y'all system. So the Atlanta system, man, were you on like a high level, medium level, low levels? Uh-huh. Do they have that type of thing in Atlanta? Okay. Like... When when you go stateside here, uh-huh. you go to what's called Jackson Penitentiary, which is diagnostic. Uh-huh. All right. When, when you go to diagnostics, 
you stay there as long as you ain't on the mental health case load or anything you stay there maybe two weeks if you're on the mental health case load they're gonna set you there about a couple of months um once you finally get shipped to your camps you know they'll ship you out to medium minimum or maximum um i always get level weight camps i don't know why it it just always happens like that. Is, that, is, that, high, is that high level or yeah, is that medium? High level. High level? Yeah, yeah, it's high security. So that's like um, a cell or a dormitory or how was that set up? Um, most of the time it's cell houses. Uh -huh. Um, you'll have maybe maybe eighty ninety men to a dorm, but it'll uh -huh. be a cell dorm. It's like down here, really, you ain't got very many bars anymore um yeah you got got steel doors i froze up i mean again. it's yes i was full too i don't know why it's good it's back on now uh the hell Worst comes to worst, I can merge this with uh, another video. If we can't keep them going. Okay, yeah. it's back on. You're good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I don't know why it's doing it. That's like, all good. I, I can I can edit it out. It's no big deal. All right. But, um, yeah, like the prison systems down here, they don't really offer none of, none of that high-level stuff that you was talking about for yeah. education-wise. They don't do it down here. You get maybe fire department. Um, they teach you electrician work, um, computer classes, GED, stuff like that. But as far as really getting HVAC certification and stuff like that, I didn't see none of that the whole time yeah. I was in there. Um, I went to take my GED, but I got out before my test. Um, I did take some computer classes. Um, like stuff like that. Um, I got college credits in computer courses. Um, like really down here, it's nothing like up there where y'all at. Is yeah. <sighs> Sorry, I had to drink a coke. My bad. Are you good? But um, like the prison systems down here. Really, they send me to gangland every time. I go to gangland. Yeah. Uh, so, so you guys have like a you guys got like a security gang threat like prison and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, we yeah. have we have those too. We have those too. Uh, like Altry State Penitentiary when I was there, um, it was, and it's talked about on the internet that Altry is gangland. Um, like you know. Uh, G's, Bloods, Crips, um, yeah, stuff like that. There's a whole bunch of them. Um, like we got really, we got a lot of gang prisons down here. Um, like that are just slap full of gang. You know what I'm saying? So, do they keep people really, separate, or do they 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 put everybody on the same yard? I mean, they they'll separate the yards. They won't really let another dorm go with another dorm. Yeah. Like, uh, Altry, where I was just talking about, it's two, uh, you got like F1 and F2. All right. That's two separate dorms, but both of those dorms can go out on the yard together. Now, yeah. like you won't go with like F and three or F and E, they won't go together or nothing like that. Right. Like stuff like that. Um, dang, and like at Jackson, it, it was so bad at Jackson, bro, that they because the doors and the bars because they do got bars at Jackson, but cell yeah. houses down there, you could pop the doors. So they were people popping the doors and stuff, man. Jackson, a hey, Jackson ain't no joke, bro. No joke at all. Yeah. Um, like when when you come through there. Everybody tells you, bro, before you leave your county jail, go into prison, they'll tell you straight up, hey, don't buy no store at Jackson. And everybody's like, why? And sure enough, 
sure enough. Hey, <laughs> they straight robbing down there, bro. It ain't, it ain't no joke yeah. down there. So, like, so what do they got? Do they got weights and shit there? They got air conditioning. Uh, you can buy a no, TV. Any of that type of shit. Georgia. No, state of Georgia took the free weights out. They won't give you weight machines or nothing, bro. Can you buy a TV and shit from commissary? Um, no, nah. nah, you get a radio. That's it. That's it. So yep. you just got the so you just got the so you just got the TVs in the day room. That's it. Yep, that's it. And Man. then you have to have if you don't have a radio, you can't, you can't you listen can to the TV going on the TV. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So what about the um? <clears throat> so what about air conditioning, man? Because I know it's hot as fuck down there. They got AC in the units. Ooh. Just buy a little fan. Yep. Little clear, just little clear, a uh, cool yeah. wave. <laughs> yeah, they got one. Hey, they got fans in the ceiling, right? Yeah. They'll turn them on, and under the doors, it sucks in cool air. Yeah. So that's how they get the cool air in there, man. It's like I went to the hole down there, right? Hey, bro. Man, it was in the middle of summer too. They bring your fan to the hole. Yeah, <laughs> man. Hey, I went to the hole. Man, I was like, oh no. And it was stupid, man. I didn't even. Hey, I, I missed. I missed an appointment with the doctor, yeah. so they put me in the hole. I was like, what? I was like, man, no, it's crazy. Yeah. So, man, but I mean, don't get me wrong. You know, hey, I met a lot of good dudes. Down there, you know what I'm saying? They, it was all right, yeah. but down at Jackson, I was like, man, I stayed in my cell, bro. I was like, uh, uh-uh, I ain't going out here. Hey, no lie. The first time of, I come a out, of, cell, a lot of killings, a lot of killings and rapes and shit like that in the systems down there, murders and shit and all that, or is it everybody's pretty much uh like fucking um you know segregated from each other and and they really can't get at each other? Because I know in our like supermaxes. Um, you're not gonna just be able to get at anybody. Now on the maxes on the yard, yeah, motherfuckers getting hacked up. But in the super maxes and shit, you know, where all the real killers and stuff are, man, they keep those dudes pretty much locked the fuck down. They can't even get to each other. Yeah. You so, had cut out for a minute, boss. I couldn't you had oh, cut shit, out. My fault. So on yeah, Jackson, are they are, are, are so on Jackson, the inmates being able to mingle with each other, you guys are able to actually get at each other on there? Is it real violent or is it is it pretty much locked uh, yeah. down and shit? I mean, it was violent. Like they fixed the doors now where you can't pop out. Um yeah. they fixed all the locks and stuff. Um like there was too many people getting stabbed and stuff down there. Oh um, yeah, yeah. So like when they fixed the doors, it cut down a lot of that. Um but like I ain't I ain't been back in a year, so you know what I'm saying? I've been I've been doing good, and that's so, you on probation. You still on papers? I'm still on paper, bro. I had uh, in 2018. Uh, I got sentenced to 30, 30 years probation. Um, when they sentenced me to that, I I was like, man. I can't, I can't, I can't get out here and do the same things I used to. Man, I had to cut everybody off, man. I had to cut so, off. So how, much, how, much, how much papers you have right now left? Man, I'm on 27 years paper, bro. And and, that, and, that, and that's a mandatory probation. Yeah. They actually keep you on probation that long. They don't cut that shit yeah. short. I'm on two. I'm on two 10 year sentences for 20 years, and then a 15 year sentence. Damn, dude, that's fucking whack. That's that's a lot yeah. of time for fucking probation, man. Yep. That's like uh. Got to be good the rest of your fucking life, man. You can't, you can't slip at all. Uh-uh. You know what I mean? That's a, that's a tough one there, bro. Um, I might have to go a different route with getting your CDL then, because with CR England, um, they're fucking tough on people still being on papers and going through. That. They don't care about you being a felon. They're they yeah. tough about you still being on probation. But I have another way to go through the workforce uh, with CDS. So, um, the workforce will will pay for everything and do the same thing for you also, especially since you're still on papers. And stuff. So we'll have to do that. I'm glad you told me that because I didn't know you were still on papers. So um, I got a different route that I'll take you through to help you get your CDL through the workforce and stuff like that, man, Uh, which is still going to be free of charge. And that's for anybody on here that's listening to these, man. If you're a felon or whatever, even if you're not a felon, I can help you and you're just doing bad and shit, man. Um, I don't know much about a whole lot of shit, but when it comes to getting your CDLs and this tractor trailer stuff, 
Um, mm-hmm. I know that I know the ins and outs to this thing, whether you're a felon or not. So um, I, I can help you get your shit, man. I can help you get, you know, get your, get your foot out there, man, and, and start making some money and, and being able to survive. You know, um, just don't wait till it's too late. You feel like your back is against the wall and you can't do nothing else. So therefore, you go back to doing fucking crime. I know a lot of people, man, wait for that, you know. I, you know, and my brother and that man, my brother, my brother, just my brother, an example. That way, I make this easy. Um, you know, he he put his own back against the wall, and and you know, I tried to help him get his CDL. I tried to help him, you know, what I mean, get get certified with his HVAC through my boy's skills and stuff, so he could get a career. He didn't want it, you know what I'm saying? So a lot of people use that, um, man, I got to eat, man, I got to survive mentality to to justify them going back to doing crime to justify yep. them going back to picking up a pistol and going back out and robbing people and stealing and selling drugs they use that as a justification man um to man the system did this shit i, I got i gotta survive man they they put me they they they, they made this happen so now they're gonna get the you know the predators coming back out and I'm, I'm gonna tear shit up you know what i mean yep. so i've been there i've done that I, i've i've did that after my first bid you know, I, I made it. I made everything stack against me that could possibly stack against me to the point where I was just living off the land and stealing and robbing and doing everything that I wanted to fucking do. I was taking anything I wanted. I stole anything I wanted. I sold anything I wanted. Everybody was free game. Everybody could get it. And that's the way I was living. You know what I mean? If it, if it was my survival or you, I'm going to get you. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it wasn't that my back was against the wall. I had plenty of job opportunities, man. I had plenty of things that I could have went out and did. And this is way before I was tatted up like this. And this is, you know, and th- and this was my first bid. I was a first time felon. I had plenty of opportunities, man. I didn't have my CDL. I, I didn't know what I didn't. I-, I put myself in the position of putting my back against the wall, you know? So all you people out there, man, that, that have come home from prison and they use that as an excuse. They use that as their, their option, man. They just wait for that option. Oh my, I got to go back to doing this shit. I, they they did this to me. That now they're gonna feel it. Now 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 I'm gonna tear shit up. You know that man, you're doing that to yourself, man. The only person you're tearing up is you and your family. Because at the okay. end of the day, any of the real rich motherfuckers that have gotten rich from crime is in the feds, and the other dumb motherfuckers are in the state. You know what yep. I'm saying? So I don't know any rich criminals out here that are still out here getting it. The only rich criminals I know are the ones that have been caught. You know what yep. I'm saying? I'm not saying that there's some out here. But I don't know them. We don't hear about them until they get locked up. So get locked up. the only yep. real rich criminals I know is in the Fed system, the real rich ones. And for all the dumb motherfuckers that have been caught are in the state. You know what I'm saying? That weren't getting rich. You know, so, you know, look, man. Uh, well, I'm not, I'll take that back for you state inmates that were getting money uh, that just didn't get caught on the federal level. You know what I'm saying? Let, I, I'll keep it like that. That just didn't get busted on the federal level where the feds picked your case up. Um, so don't get, man, I was getting money, Miles. I was in the state. What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, because you got to fucking, you got you, you fucking snuck, you snuck away from the feds, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only reason why you fucking got money and you didn't get caught. <laughs> hey, but, hey, you know, but hey, I, you I, know. I, I, I can, I can, I can relate to that number too. Yeah. Hey, man, because I, that's why I got lucky, Miles. I ain't going to lie. Is that's why I quit up thing because I realized that on this one I got lucky. They got a lot of probation, bro. And I'm gonna tell you, I ain't never seen nobody have to hold that. I know people that have got that much probation, but you only do like five years of that or four years. I mean, if they hold you to that amount of probation, bro, yeah, you got to be good for the rest of your life. And like you said, if you don't, they're gonna give you a fucking life sentence back, man. Yeah. You know, exactly. Hey, exactly. Hey, that's why I hung my. Hey, I hung my tie up, bro. I said, uh, uh-uh, I don't want no more. Y'all just give me, y'all just give me enough time that I'm. If I bite some more off, I'm gone for the rest of my life, bro. And I know me and you have talked, and you and your temptations have been there to to go back into the streets and stuff like that, man. But you know, the one thing about this is, man, I've said this shit, and I know that you probably say the same thing, man. Like you just said, talking about the system in there, no TV, the heat. You know, the misery of being inside that motherfucker, man. You know, I, I don't know. I don't know too many motherfuckers that, that would not agree to what I'm about to say. I would rather be free living in a tent in the woods, eating ramen fucking noodles. than I would yeah. rather be and have my freedom and my freedom of choice and be out here than to be back underneath the, the, the thumb of the system, man where they tell you when you can shit, where you can shit. You got to hang blankets up to take a shit. 
you, yep. you can't. There's a lot of there's a lot of things we're not gonna talk about. There's a lot of things that you can't do. You know, while you're in there, man. You know, and, and you're gonna eat what the fuck they tell you to eat. If you ain't got somebody yep. out here taking care of you for commissary, or you ain't got your hustle on, you're gonna starve. You know, yep, motherfucker. Dude. You're gonna work in the kitchen or wherever for fucking ten, twenty cents a, a fucking hour. You know, um, you know, hey, I don't know they, if they, they, they don't even that. pay us down here, bro. Yeah, see, there you go. Yeah. That's slavery. That's what you call modern day slavery, man. Modern day slavery, man. They have you working for fucking nothing or pennies. And yeah. it's and it's to keep their system moving. If every inmate decided, man, I'm not working shit. I'm not doing a motherfucking thing. You do it. You're not paying me. You do it. The system would fall the fuck apart immediately. Yep. Within a day's time, they would have to hire outside people to take care of mm -hmm. the inmates because they have to take care of them. So that's, that's right. they would have to hire thousands and thousands and thousands of outside workers, which would cost millions and millions and millions of dollars to the state to hire people to take care of the inmates. The inmates yep. keep the system running. I don't give a fuck which system you're in. The inmates right. keep right. the system running. Whether you're working for free or working for pennies, working for good time or working for fucking nothing. <laughs> One yep. thing's for sure, the inmates keep the system running. And yep. not just the system, but in Virginia, we make uh, license plates. In Virginia, we make uh, clothes for the officers. We make um, sheets for um, hospitals. You know what I'm saying? We got in industries, man, that do all this. So we make furniture and shit like mm. that. We got industries in our system, which is really slavery because you're, you're fucking you're sweat shopping a motherfucker out to make something that you're making billions of dollars on a year you know yep. what i'm saying so just look at it like that man and think man that you know if, if you want to feel what it was what it felt like to be a slave being told what the fuck to do living in the heat living by the pure minimum of food um the medical system is fucked up you know what I'm saying? They will literally let you die in the system. Um, you got horse doctors in there. They're not fucking trying to take care of you. They will literally let your ass die from small health-related issues that are easily fixed. I've seen people die from, you know? Then go to prison, man, and catch it. And you'll see what the fuck we're talking about, man. It's not a fucking game, you know? It's not a game. You exactly right, bro, about them letting, hey, letting folks die in there. Man, I seen one dude get stabbed. Hey, it took 45 minutes for medical to get there, bro. 45 minutes. Man, it already bled to death. Yeah. So they don't they don't care, bro. They, uh, yeah. they do not care. So when people think that prison's a game, bro, prison ain't no game. You better <laughs> you better take heed. You better get your education first. Yeah. And take heed to that. Because man. I'm out here. I got a seventh grade education. I've been to prison four times. And I don't have nothing to show for it. But this time I'm picking myself up because I've done told everybody that, hey, look, man, I got too much time on my hands. I done bit off 30 year paper. I can't. And it's mandatory papers. That I won't never get off of, man. Yeah. Nah, that's like me and one of my buddies, bro. We got into an argument, right? And I told him, I was like, you know what? I was like, bro, I ain't even going to take it there. It don't because it don't even need to go there. I was yeah. like, because at the end of the day, bro, I ain't going back to jail for you. Nobody, man. I got 30 yeah. years paper, bro. Yeah, yeah. He just wanted me to come get a car. Wouldn't you come give him a ride? I was like, man. Yeah. Sometimes you gotta, man. Sometimes, sometimes you gotta be that that person, man. Because, you know, you know, like I know, like in my situation out here, you know, what I'm saying what I do, you know, I deal with a lot of shit. You know, what I'm saying yeah. so, you know, you know, 20 years ago, 15 years ago, I would have already been back in prison because I, I couldn't let I couldn't let people say anything that they wanted to say to me without suffering big consequences for it. You know what I'm saying yeah. and. You know, I, I've had to really deal with this social media thing and the YouTube thing and stuff like that and realize that um, these people ain't nothing but a fucking fart in the wind. They're not going to do shit. They're not about shit. Um, they're definitely not trying to fight. So it's a, and, and I'm not trying to kill. So, um, you know, it's just it's just 
sometimes you got to fucking just say, you know what? These motherfuckers ain't shit. You know, I always tell people, listen, all of our dates, times and locations are always up for the fights. You know what I'm saying? Come and strap up. Let's get it. Come put these gloves on. Uh, if you're not talking about fighting, then you're not even talking my language, man, because um, I'm not willing to take it to the streets with people anymore. Unless it unless it came out of, you know, my life and my family's life, then, then yeah. I'm going to then I'm gonna do what I have to do. But, you know, as far as YouTube goes, as far as these 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 cloud chasing clowns do this, it, you know, listen, man, unless you're willing to go ahead, and dim their lights, then it's not worth it. Because one thing for sure, they're not going to fight. They're not going to take it to the level I want to take it to. And just like you said, man, you know, sometimes you got to look at it. Look, man, am I willing to go back to prison for some clowns? You know, and, and, the, and the answer is simple, man. You know, if you really think about it, fuck no. Ain't nobody worth going back to fucking prison for unless it's your life, or your family's life on the line. You know what I'm saying? Then, 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 then you know, whatever we're going to do. But, yeah. um, you know, and, and like I said, man, you know, there's always, there's always a way out, man. There's always uh, an alternative to what you have thoughts of and plans to do, you know, because man, I'm telling you a lot of people, man, go back to prison. It doesn't matter how much time. Well, didn't you learn your lesson? Uh, you did such and such amount of time. There's no lessons to be learned, man. The lesson has to come from yourself. The lesson has to be like, look, man, I'm sick and tired of doing this shit. You know, yep. I'm done with this shit. I can't do this no more. And I'm done. I'm stopping. You know, there is no lesson that man. Well, oh, man, I'm, I, oh, man, they, they, they taught me a hell of a, you know, they smacked the shit out of me in there. And that's, that, that don't mean shit, man. Listen, if you're wired a certain way, if you're, if you're wired in a criminal direction, man, um, and, and I've been a criminal since I was a kid. So it doesn't take much, man, to unravel that tape and put them wires back together, man, to put you back into that same position. I don't yeah, give a fuck how much time you've done. You know, how much time? Doesn't matter, right? Doesn't matter. Right. If you're wired that right. way, if you're wired, if your wires are fucked up, I can't make mm -hmm. my Ford fit turn into a fucking Ferrari, man. It's wired the way that it's wired. You know what yep. I'm saying? As much as I wish that Ford fit was a, I mean, that Honda fit was a, was a fucking Ferrari, it's a Honda fit, man. You know what yep. I'm saying? So I can't turn that Honda Fit into a fucking Ferrari. I can't wire it no matter how I do it. It's not going to change. That's and right. I believe that we're the same way. I believe that there's certain things that we can do to, you know, put, you know, some electric tape on them wires and quit them from connecting. But at the end of the day, man, when you take that fucking tape off, you still got the same fucking person in front of you, man. You have to be the one to say, look, man, I'm, I'm tired of this shit. I got to fucking cut these wires, man. Otherwise, I'm going to end up in this motherfucker for the rest of my life. You know, that's right. That's, that's where hey, that's that's where that criminal addictive thinking comes in, bro. Because no if you don't cut the criminal addictive thinking, that's like I right, on substance abuse. All right. This is one thing about cutting your criminal addictive thinking. If I can take a shortcut. But I got to go buy the dope man house. Guess what they're going to do? They're going to put a trigger in your mind. They're yeah. going to put a trigger in your mind. You might not stop there that day. Yeah. But you automatically think, hey, wait a minute. Whoa, I just passed the dope man. He's, I wonder if he's still living there. Damn, you remember how much fun yeah. I used to have? But stop by and say hi. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Yeah. man. Back in the days, boy, when I'd have got out, man. Hey, back in the days, boy, I'd have been like, hey, man, I wonder if he's still living there. Hold up. Hold up. I'm turning the car around. But now, hey. boy, that's yeah, like, no hey, man, I can't, I can't even go there, man. Like, yeah. Because. I had to I had to change my criminal addictive thinking. So that's that's what I'm doing to better myself. Cause used to, man, like you say, hey, used to I got it out the mud, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I'm tired of that lifestyle. I'm tired of I'm tired of always having to look over my shoulder. Now I yeah. can honestly say that I don't have to look over my shoulder, that my probation officer is cool. I've got a good, hey, believe it or not, I had a good probation officer. I had a good one. She would actually listen. She had a heart. And she uh, came and told me the other day, man, she was getting transferred. Uh, she had got a promotion. So, but like I That's say, something. man, yep. And she, hey, man, when she heard about that, I was talking to you and stuff about this. About the uh guns up, I mean guns down and gloves up. Yeah, man, she was like, she was all for that. She's like, man, maybe that will, maybe, that's a good yeah. step for you. So yeah, I was like, right. so I yeah, mean, we that, have a lot of we got a lot of people. Hopefully, you get another good probation officer, man, because man, that's part of you. 
you got way too much time on probation to have a fucked up probation officer. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to have somebody that's going to be in your corner, man, that's all for you, getting you to CDL and driving and making money, man, and, and really letting you spread your wings and live. You know, because, man, you know, um, that that being able to succeed out here on your own is, is is hard enough, man. When you're on probation, it's uh that's that's an added weight to everything, man. Yeah. That's a that's a that's a that's a hell of a hurdle and a speed bump. I had a good probation officer, man. My probation officer actually used to come to my fights and everything, man. And uh, my PO um would let me leave the state in the tractor trailer. I was getting ninety day passes in the tractor trailer. My PO was was super sweet. And like I said, they, they any of any of the fights that I fought locally, they were there. The entire probation office, including the head motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? And um, the weird thing is, is that I work for the probation office now. Um, the, the probation office is the ones that gets us into the reentry programs for the state mm -hmm. of Virginia. Let me let me clear that up because I also deal with uh, the federal reentry shits too. So and the halfway houses. So and and job fairs. So I deal with a federal uh, a federal people as well. But for the returning citizen magazine and for the reentry program for the state of Virginia, I deal with the head probation out here. We go into the prisons with the head probation officer that runs all the probation officers in the state of Virginia. So I tell this to a lot of my Virginia guys, um, not just Virginia, but any of you states, man, if you come on this channel, you know what I'm saying? A lot of this content goes back into the reentry programs and stuff like that. Um, not necessarily the return to citizen magazine. Those are, those are specific things. But but definitely for the reentry programs, a lot of people hear these stories and stuff like that because it helps people get out. It helps people be able to, um, you know, get back into society, man. And, and you know, um, I'm telling you, man, if you get on this channel and you're on probation and your probation officer sees this shit, especially in my state, uh, Miss Hallbrook is who we deal with out of Virginia. Um, you have a very good chance of being a good success rate on your probation. I, I, I can't promise you things, but I'm going to tell you, man, if your probation officer sees you on here and stuff like that, um, it's going to help you out a lot, especially in my state. You know what I'm saying? In Virginia, it's going to help you out fucking a lot. Um, but, you know, and, and any probation officer sees that you're on here trying to do this stuff, man, and you're on here talking good, um, and, and you're out here really trying to succeed and stuff, man, I, I can't do nothing but be positive for you. You know what I mean? But um, yeah. at the end of the day, man, um, I'm definitely going to help you get your fucking CDL. I got you on that shit. That's my word. I promise you that. I've helped probably over 20-some people get their CDL since they've been home. Um, one of which is my boy Danny Rios. I talk about Danny all the time. Danny is a millionaire now, y'all. Um, if you haven't watched my other Prison Talk videos, I talk about Danny all the time because he owns like five trucks, four or five trucks now. Um, he's got contracts with Amazon. Uh, Y'all don't know what Amazon is, then you're fucking all the way out of the loop. Um, but he's got contracts with Amazon, and he is making probably a couple million dollars a year. He doesn't even drive a truck anymore. He's got people in his trucks. He sits at home, and he's making millions of dollars a year off his trucks. So I know there's good money in it. Very good money. And if you got your own, and if you got your own business, and he went out, man, he, his whole goal was to not work for a company. His whole goal was to have his own company. So when I got him on, he got on Western Express. All right. He did his first year over the road with Western Express, went in as a student driver. He worked with Western Express. He bought his own truck through Western Express. He did a lease to own with them. Um, after that, he took that truck. After he paid that truck off, he quit Western Express. He started running his own broker loads for himself. Um, no contracts, just straight running through brokers. Yeah. Then he started get. Then he bought a brand new truck. He put somebody else in his old truck. He bought a brand new truck and he started leasing it on to contracts to you know big name contracts man and um he did a family dollar he, he's done a couple of different things pet smart he's done a lot of big companies man he's got uh under his shit and um just now like i said within like the last year i think he, i just talked to him his sister owns like a church down in roanoke virginia and stuff man so i i'm, I'm really tight with his family i'm pretty cool with his family but he uh i also did debo my, my boy debo in here uh yeah, the rolling yeah. 111 the 111 crip we all grew up together me danny reels debo we all grew up together so we all we all know each other really well and um, but man, he's man making millions of dollars, man, dude. And and if he could have done it, I could have done that. Like I said, I'm the one that got him his CDL. And I might be talking to you right now, and fuck, you might be doing this shit a couple years from now. You know what I'm saying? So you don't know where it's gonna take you. Not everybody's doing that. Like my boy Ofa, he's still working with a company. Not everybody goes out to seek out having their own business and being millionaires. Some people are just content 
with having health insurance and working for a company, you know, but Danny was on the sky's the limit shit and he went out and he did it, you know, so the sky is the limit, man. You know, like my boy, I told you, my boy Skilly, he's got his own HVAC company, man. He's, I mean, his own electrician company. He's doing his fucking thing out here, man. Doing, you know, big shit. You know, he's got like eight or nine people working for him. You know, he, he's probably, I don't know what he's making. I, I'd say he's probably a millionaire too. I know he does like electrician shits for like Fridays and Ruby Tuesdays and all that stuff. So I'm sure he's fucking, he's doing pretty good, you know? So <laughs> you can come out of prison and you can make it, but you have to want to do it, man. And you got to yeah, stay you federal. To like you said, you have to fucking, uh, all those temptations, man, have got to stop because it, man, it, yep. it only takes one bad day to say, fuck this, I'm tired of this shit. It's going down. Yep. So like, I want to take one bad day, man, and it's a wrap. And that's, you know, that's one thing I like, because I do try to talk to people if, you know, if they need me to talk, like if they're addicts or something, you know, because I'm an addict. So, I yeah. mean, I'm a recovering addict, but I'm an addict. Right. So I know what they, I know what to relate to. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's like when people call me, I'm like, okay, well, you can't do it like that. You got, you got to quit. Stop thinking like that, bro. Cause you can't, you can't change unless you want to change. Wow. Like you say, is you can't change unless you want to change. You got to have the want to. Yeah, it has to be you. Yep. Yep. No doubt. Well, man, look, man, I mean, I'm proud of you. Like I said, man, you out here, you a step ahead of Luke. I, I literally, within the last two weeks, I've done, you know, prison talks with several people, and you are not. You're doing better than probably a few of them. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, man, um, I wouldn't let nothing detour your mind. Stay focused. And I'm going to help you get your, like I said, I'm going to help you get your CDL and stuff, man. Uh, now that I know that you're on probation, I know I got a different route to get you on to get your uh, your CDL. But um, just stay focused, man. You know, don't let those temptations get to you, man, because if anybody could be tempted, it would be a lot of these other dudes that are on my channel, man. Go watch, go watch the video with Casper. If you ever feel like you're tempted, go watch Chris Lampkins. Just got out of, of a substance abuse house. You know, my boy Luke just got back out of jail again. You know what I'm saying? Go watch their stories and look at the situations and the positions that they're in right now. So you're 10 steps ahead of them um, where you're at right now in life than they are. You know, so no matter how bad it gets, that motherfuckers out here got it worse. And I'm sure I'm going to have even worse on here you know, within the next couple of weeks. I got a lot of these left to do. So keep this shit together, man. Um anybody wants to reach out to you, man, how can they get a hold of you on like Instagram, um, social media? You got anything like that? Like, um, I've got TikTok, uh, Hillbilly Hot Boy, um, Instagram, Hillbilly Hot Boy. Um, you can get to me at Facebook, uh Bobby Hicks. You can get to me there. Um uh, really, that's that's the only ones I got. Um, so yeah, I want to ask you one more, one more question about y'all system, man. Um, because I don't know, I've never done, I've never had anybody from Atlanta system on here. Um, I got some gang members in Atlanta that I talk to, but not ones that are willing to come on here on a prison talk and stuff. Uh, not ones that are willing to come on here at all. But yeah. uh, you know, but I do got gang members that I talk to out of Atlanta and stuff like that. A few of them I've helped out and stuff like that, man. And um. Uh, a few of them I still talk to even now uh, with jobs. I felt a couple guys get jobs that are down there, but they won't come on here. I, I, not, okay. I've tried. They won't come on here. Let me ask you something about your system, man. Um, What what percentage do you guys do down there? Do you guys still got parole or do you, do you got an 85%, 100%? What, what, what do you guys get down there? I like mean, if you're good, what do you get? Uh, really... I'm not too sure about the recidivism rate down here because no, not, not recidivism rate. I, I was going to ask you that too. But what about the like the time like that you get? If you're good, do you get any time knocked off of your sentences or anything like that? Sometimes, yeah. Um, yeah. It really depends. Really, you still it's got up parole? To the parole board. I mean, you still parole and stuff. Yeah, yeah, we got a parole. Um, it's up to the parole board on how much percentage you do. Really, it goes by a grid sheet down here. So yeah. I mean. Like level eight, you doing level eight, you doing ninety to one hundred percent of your time, right? Um, because it I goes up to a level eight, I believe. Yeah. So, so level yeah. five, you probably be doing what, like 
like 50% of your time? Yeah, about 50. But, like, you do have, you know, like, they have what's called pick point system down here. You can get into classes and stuff, and yeah. the classes will help you get time knocked off. Got you, got you. So, All right, what about your court systems, man? Do um, what's like like the 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 plea bargain towards fighting cases down there? Like, it, do you have a fighting chance to fight cases down there, or is it basically a plea bargain state? You take a plea bargain, and that's what it is. Really, really, mostly it's plea bargains. Um, yeah, I mean, like. So if you got a court like appointment, let's say, you got, let's say you're poor and you got a court appointed attorney and stuff like that. What? Um, oh yeah, they gonna they gonna want they gonna want you to take plea deals. They ain't trying to yeah. work with you. They if ain't you trying to. Take, work. You if you don't take a plea, if you don't take a plea deal down there, do they they give you like a lot more time, or how do they usually handle yeah. that down there? Yeah, a lot yeah more time. if you don't take the plea deal, they trying to give you the full amount of the time you can get. Right. And if you don't take the deal, like okay, on like on my case, yeah. all right. So. They had me for uh, two aggravated assaults, possession of a firearm. Well, right. like I said, I was trying to defend my moms and trying to defend myself. So I mean, but the lawyer down there, bro, he wasn't trying. He wasn't trying to work with me. He wasn't trying to work for me. Yeah. Um, the witness that they had on me was a convicted felon, and they had been caught for perjury within the last six months. Had to serve time for six months. So his credibility yeah. shouldn't have been shit. Yeah. So when and my lawyer didn't even know this, bro. Now, you my attorney. You supposed to know this shit. Straight up, you supposed to know this before me. Man, would you believe? Me? Yeah. Would you believe the <laughs> DA didn't even know it, bro? I'm I'm dead to, look, I literally try to tell these people this shit, man. You know, um, not just on the plea bargain part, man, but just the part of having a court appointed attorney, man. A lot of these people swear that they're fucking lawyers themselves and they understand the system and, you know, they see what's on paper and they fucking, they, oh, that's black and white. That's what it is. And I'm just like, you really don't know your ass from a hole in the ground, man. And, and you know, me personally, I got I to gotta deal with it because I'm on social media. But it's like, it's funny to me how you understand the system better than I understand the system. You never even fucking been there or you understand this or you understand my case in there and you don't even know who the fuck I am. You know what I mean? Yeah. It is, and, and I just like to hear that from other states, man. I like to hear that from state to state to state to state to see exactly where the fuck they stand. I just did my boy BNFA, um, Gary. I just did his shit down in Houston. I mean, down in Dallas. Same thing, man. It seems like this is a worldwide, or not a worldwide, a nationwide um, situation, man, where everybody's taking plea bargains. If you got a court appointed attorney, you're fucked, mm -hmm. and you're going to yeah. take a plea. You're going you're gonna to do exactly what the fuck they tell you to take. You're going to sign exactly what the fuck they tell you to sign. And yep. You know, hopefully, exactly. hopefully people, man, can start having an open mind and understand, you know, I've been on, like you said, a level eight would be like equivalent to our level fours, um, major institutions. Uh, we don't have level eights. Level eights is, is we got a six, which is a super max, but you'll never see the light of day at a level six. Um, so I'm going to assume like your level eights are like our level fours where you're still able to cause a lot of violence on the yard, you know. Yeah. So um, that would be like our level fours. All right. You know, I, I tell I tell these dudes, man, I've been in the cell with dudes. I've been on the yard with dudes. I've been dudes. I've been in I've been on. I've been on yards where guys have got exonerated after 30 years in prison where they have ended up finding new evidence and letting guys off of old murder cases, and rape charges and stuff like that, man. Um, but it's too late. They've already done 30 years in prison, man. They're free now. But how can you give them 30 years of their fucking life back? And what about the other percentage of the people that are in there and that are never coming home that are innocent, that are mm -hmm. sitting behind a fence, that are fucking innocent, man, you know? And I, I've heard the stories a million times, man. Like I said, I've been in cells with dudes with life sentences, 75 years, 85 years. I've been in cells with, with guys that I know for a fact are innocent people. You know what I mean? I know 100% that they're innocent, man. If not, they're hella actors. And I'm not saying there's not hella actors in prison, but, you know, I've been in there for a long time, man. I can smell through a lot of shit, and I know there's a lot of innocent motherfuckers in prison, man, that are never coming home. So yeah, man, before God. you cast judgment on people, before you fucking throw stones at fucking people, man, you know, you need to look at where the person is at today. You need to look at what the person is doing now in life, man. Don't always fucking, like you said, man, you closing jobs on these people from giving them jobs. 
uh, like you were talking about, they're going to get that 16 year old a job before you, you know, you're closing the door on a lot of good people because you're casting judgments on past convictions or past plea bargains that they have may have took because they were facing life sentences or whatever their situations may have been, man. So they've closed cases out on these people and these people just want jobs and they want to live, but you're yeah. shutting doors on them and understand, man, you know, where I did crime at wasn't in bad neighborhoods, you know, People I've robbed, people I've stole from, the houses I've ran up in, places I've burglarized were in good neighborhoods. So don't think that you're outside the box because you live in a privileged area or you live in a nice area or a nice neighborhood. Um, that's where all my victims were. So if you think that because you're living in such and such amount, oh, well, I don't have to worry about them. That's those people. That's their problem. Understand, it could be your, per it could be your mom's problem. It could be your dad's problem. It could be your kid's problem. So yep. when you shut these doors on these dudes because you think that, well, they're felons, I'm not giving them a fucking chance, man. This is what it says on paper. That's what I'm judging them by. Man, yep. you may have just you may have just shut the door on the best worker and most loyal person that you would have ever hired in your life, man. Real shit. So I don't have much else to say. I talk my ass off. You got anything else you want to say? Uh hey, I just I want first and foremost, man, I want to thank God for waking me up every day, bro. Absolutely. Um, I want to give a shout out to my mom's Rebecca Hicks. Um, really, Mouse, I really ain't got too much more to say except, hey, man, y'all go get your education for the people that's watching. Man, nope. jail ain't no place to be, man. Nope. Just remember that. And if you ain't got that education, man, um, what what do you think you're gonna do? How you think you'll survive? What do you think you? What, how you think you're gonna live? You know, the education is everything. Uh, whether it be a skill or a trade or whatever it may be, it's that 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 that's everything, man. I, I'm not saying everybody needs to go to college, but everybody needs to be certified in something, man, that they can um that way you're a necessity in this world, man. If you're not a necessity out here, then you're a nobody. You have to be a necessity, man. You know? Yep. They can find laborers all day long. They need to find that motherfucker that's telling the laborers what to do, that's certified, yep. that knows what the fuck is going on out here. You know, so that's the people they need. Laborers, they can find a million times a day. Yep. Go get your education, man, and get your skill sets up, man. That way it's unstoppable that they can't give you a job because you're a fucking necessity out here. If you're not a necessity, then you're nobody. Straight yep. up. All right, y'all, man. Hey, I appreciate you, homie. Thanks a lot right, for right. coming on here. Um, I'll post this up tomorrow. All right. All right, All right brother. All right. Appreciate you, man. Good, Peace. Man. All, All right, right, man. Good.